Wisconsin Nature and Science Center. Thanks for joining me for another Wild Wednesday video. Today we're going to talk about a really interesting group of birds. Let's get started. The birds we're going to learn about today are pretty misunderstood. Some people think they're gross and even ugly. I think they're really interesting and pretty cute. Maybe you were able to guess that today we're going to talk about vultures. Did you know that there are 23 species of vultures living today? Let's learn some more about them. If you live in Texas like I do, you're probably most familiar with turkey vultures and black vultures. In this picture here, you can actually see one of each. Up top there is our turkey vulture, and down to the side there's our black vulture. I actually took this picture at Reimer's Ranch just a few years ago. But these vultures actually live in much of North and South America. So here we can see the range of the turkey vulture. It's basically all of both continents up until southern Canada and black vultures have a smaller range that makes up most of South America and the southern parts of North America. Did you know that this makes them new world vultures because they live in these two continents, North and South America? There are five other new world species. Let's learn a bit about them. New world vultures all have really strong senses of smell that they use to find their food. We can see on our turkey vulture here, it has really big nostrils and you can really see compared to the nostrils of a black vulture. Black vultures usually hang out and look for turkey vultures. If they see a turkey vulture eating something, they know there's food there. But look for those big nostrils as I introduce the other new world vultures. So we have the lesser yellow-headed vulture that lives in South America and Mexico, the greater yellow-headed vulture, which lives in the tropical parts of South America, the California condor, which lives in California, the Andean condor, which lives in the Andes, and finally, the king vulture, which lives in southern Mexico and northern Argentina. Is there anything that you notice all of these birds have in common? I see big nostrils on some of them, but I do notice that none of them have feathers on their head. They all lack head feathers. Hmm, I wonder why that is. There are quite a few vulture species that live in Africa, Asia, and Europe, making them old world species because they live on these three continents. 16 out of the 23 vulture species live in this area. We're going to take a look at some of those species, but then we're going to focus on vulture facts in general. So let's get started with the Egyptian vulture that looks very regal or very fancy with its almost all white body. Next is the bearded vulture. Can you see why it has this name? And last is the palm nut vulture. These three are all very close relatives with each other, and I think they're some of the prettiest species of vultures. What do you think? Some other old world vultures are the Cinereus vulture, the Griffin vulture, the White Rumped vulture, Rupel's vulture, and the Slender Billed vulture. By looking at these pictures, can you find anything that they all have in common? I noticed that they all have pretty big bodies, and it looks like some long wings, and they all have a sharp curved beak. If we pay a little closer attention to the pictures on this slide, we can see that they have really big wings, right? Why do you think the vultures have wings that are so big? This Rupel's vulture actually has a wingspan of about eight feet. That's almost one and a half of me across. That's really big. Why do you think a vulture would need wings that are so big? Well, it turns out they have to fly over a lot of area to find their food. And when you see vultures soaring up in the air, sometimes it looks like they're circling an area, and sometimes people think that means that they know something is gonna die, they know there's gonna be food soon. But actually, it's because those big wings can catch heat waves as they're rising up into the air because hot air rises. So while vultures have those big wings outstretched, they can catch air currents that are moving through the sky. And so they soar on those air currents, and those big wings help them to do it. So they have the big wings to help them cover a lot of space, and they also have these big curved beaks that help them tear into their food. So these beaks tell us that they are meat eaters, and they're actually carrion eaters, and carrion is food that's already dead when they found it. So that means that these birds are scavengers. And the word vulture actually comes from the Latin word for terror, like to tear a piece of paper. So all the birds we've talked about today are terrors and not terrors. 
Most birds of prey have really strong legs, feet, and talons, sharp talons, for grabbing food and carrying it away, like we can see on this picture of a hawk here. But vultures don't do that, so the most important tool that they have for getting their food is their beak. They have those beaks that are great for tearing, you know, hence the name terrors. Another way that vultures are different from other birds of prey is in their social structure. So most birds of prey, like hawks and eagles, are pretty solitary, meaning that they do things on their own. But vultures actually tend to do most things in groups. They will fly, hunt, and even roost or sleep in large groups. And we can see here there's even a turkey vulture hanging out with this group of black vultures because they're social animals. There are a few adaptations that vultures have that I could kind of understand why they get put into the gross category. For example, they're able to eat food that would make other decomposers or other carrion eaters sick because their stomach acid is so strong that they can break down the bacteria, they can kill the bacteria that would even hurt other decomposers, which is kind of impressive and a little gross. <laughs> Another thing that they can do is that the adults, they don't carry food to their babies, right? So if you're an adult vulture with a baby in a nest and you don't have the strength to carry food to them, what they do instead is they eat the food themselves and then before digesting it, they will regurgitate the food for the babies to eat. So if you're ever near a vulture nest, you're gonna know because it is stinky. There's a theory that tries to explain why vultures don't have feathers on their head that also has to do with the kind of nastiness or the bacteria riddenness of the food that they eat. And one idea is that they don't have feathers on their head because it's harder for bacteria to find a place to hang out and stick around on their head. Um, and this could help, you know, keep the vultures healthy by keeping those germs away from their heads, their eyes, their brains. Um, but another theory that's a little more recent has to do with thermoregulation. So the way that their body gets warmer and cooler. Since they aren't covered with feathers on their head, they can easily lose heat through that space, but they can also gain heat through that space. So if they're covered up, they're hunched up, they might be trying to retain heat. And if they're outstretched like this, they might be trying to get rid of heat so they can help control their own body temperature that way. Another thing they do to help control their body temperature has to do with their legs. And they actually pee on their legs. Yep, that's what I said, they pee on their legs. The same way that sweat cools down our bodies by coming out and evaporating, that's the same thing that these vultures are doing. They pee on their legs and it evaporates and then it keeps them cooler. And it also helps kill bacteria that they might have picked up by walking through dead stuff to get to their food um, and that helps keep them healthy too. Another way vultures thermoregulate is by changing the position of their body. Here we can see Curly, the turkey vulture that lives at the Austin Nature and Science Center, spreading out his wings to soak up the morning sun. He even does a little bit of flapping and then, ooh, that big stretch, that big extension. So this way he is getting more of his surface covered by the sunlight and this helps to warm him up in the morning. If you'd like to learn more about the vultures that live at the Austin Nature and Science Center, make sure to check out the Tiny Tours video linked in the description. So maybe vultures aren't the most glamorous birds on the planet, but they are some of the most important. If we didn't have vultures around to eat the stuff that even other decomposers couldn't eat because it would make them sick, imagine how much stinkier the world would be if those vultures weren't eating that stuff. So I'm really grateful for these amazing birds, and I hope that you are too now. If you appreciate them as much as I do, you can celebrate them on International Vulture Awareness Day, which happens on the first Saturday of every September. So in 2021, that's going to be September 4th. If you want to celebrate, you can share interesting facts about vultures with the people around you so you can help share your appreciation for those birds. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Head over to our Facebook page to see more awesome daily videos posted.